Good evening. I'm Mark Syme, Minister of the Northfield Church of Christ, and these are the evening services for Sunday, December the 5th. Uh, we'll be singing from Songs of Faith and Praise. I hope you have a copy of that book with you so that you can join in the singing. And we will start with number 577. 577. <clears throat> You were Lord of creation and Lord of my life, Lord of the land and the sea. You were Lord of the heavens before there was time, and Lord of all lords you will be. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. We bow down and we worship you, Lord. Lord of all lords, you will be. You are king of creation and king of my life, king of the land and the sea. You were king of the heavens before there was time, and king of all kings you will be. We bow down, and we crown you the king. We bow down, and we crown you the king. We bow down, and we crown you the king. King of all kings you will be. Just turn one page to number 578. 578. We will glorify the King of Kings. We will glorify the Lamb. We will glorify the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. Lord Jehovah reigns in majesty. We will bow before His throne. We will worship Him in righteousness. We will worship Him alone. He is Lord of heaven, Lord of earth. He is Lord of all who live. He is Lord above the universe. All praise to Him we give. Hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lord of Lords, who is the Great I Am. And number 318 will be the song before the Lord's Supper. Oh, sacred head now wounded With grief and shame weighed down Now scornfully surrounded With thorns mine only crown how art thou bear with anguish with sore abuse and scorn how does that visage languish which once was bright as morn. What 
language shall I borrow to thank thee, dearest friend, for this thy dying sorrow, thy pity without time in our service that we think of uh, our Savior Jesus Christ dying on the cross for the remission of our sins. We are instructed to do this on the first day of the week. The pattern was set uh, in the book of Matthew uh, in the last Passover feast uh, before the crucifixion in what is commonly called the Last Supper. It is uh, reiterated almost word for word by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And so the, the pattern is laid out for us as we will eat of the bread and drink of the fruit of the vine, as we will think of the body of our Lord and we will think of the blood that he shed for each one of us. It is uh, just wonderful that this was God's plan. It was wonderful that uh, Jesus came to earth in the form of a human, and he was willing to lower himself uh, to death, even death on the cross. Uh, let's pray for the bread. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for that wonderful plan that you had, and we're grateful that Jesus was willing to carry it out, that he died and gave up his body, that we might live, that he suffered the pain and the agony, not only of the physical agony, agony, but the separation for a short time from you as he took on the sins of the world. Bless us as we partake of this uh, bread. We ask this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. We're so grateful for the lifeblood that Jesus shed from his head, from his hands, from his feet, from his side, that he, uh, that uh, life-giving blood oozed out of his body as he hung upon the cross and died for each of us. We're grateful for that blood and we look upon it as the blood that washes away our sins as we partake of this fruit of the vine. Let's remember that sacrifice that Jesus made for us on the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And as a matter of convenience at this time, we think of giving back to the Lord. Uh, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Uh, it is our way, one of our ways of showing gratitude to the Lord. And it is one of the ways that we're able to further the efforts of the church that Jesus died for uh, to continue its mission here on earth, to con continue its mission of benevolence and to continue its mission of uh, evangelism. Help us uh, to think of that as we give back to you what is rightfully yours. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we have the desire and willingness to give, and we are grateful that we have the ability wherewith 
to give also. Help us to give with an open heart. Help us to give cheerfully. Help us to give with gratitude. Help those that are in charge of these monies to use them wisely and be just stewards uh, that uh, your work may be furthered and that those who are in need may be helped. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And as a song before the lesson, number 745. Humble yourself in the sight of the law. Humble yourself in the sight of the law. Humble yourself in the sight of the law. And he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Now Jesus is the Son of God. 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 And He died for us. And He died for us. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. That saved a wretch like me. When we've been there ten thousand years. When we've been there ten thousand years. Bright shining as the sun. Bright shining as the sun. So humble yourself in the sight of the law. So humble yourself in the sight of the law. So and he will lift you up. And he will lift you up. Thank you for participating with us in the song service and uh, praising our Lord in song as we are instructed to do. If you were a attending uh, or in attendance this morning you heard again a kind of a unusual title for uh the lesson this evening and uh the title is what's it going to be <laughs> what's it going to be last lord's day uh, i preached a lesson uh, about this the famous uh, man joshua in the old testament and it was just impressive uh, to note the great influence that Joshua had on those of his generation, as we see in Joshua 24, verses 19 to 31. And of course, uh, much of that influence was due to God being with him and doing many great works. Uh, those great works included parting of the Jordan, uh, the fall of Jericho, uh, the day that the sun and the moon stood still, and that memorable time when Joshua told one of each tribe to put a rock uh, there by where they came out of the Jordan so they could remind their children of what transpired here. Every generation needs good leadership, especially in times of struggle and doubt. And for those who lead... Um, um, a special responsibility is given to them, just as those who follow. But uh, it's just kind of a, a prelude uh, to the lesson this evening. What's it going to be? I don't know about you, but um, I don't have any bumper stickers on my car. Um, I just won't do that. But I do have some interesting T-shirts that I wear. And uh, I've seen some religious 
t-shirts. And, um, you know, there are the, what would Jesus do, uh, t-shirts. I remember I wore a, a t-shirt about Daniel in the lion's den for a period of time. But, um, in Joshua chapter 24 and verse 15, and here's where my title is going to come in. Uh, what's it going to be? Here are the words. It says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your forefathers, uh, let me, let me read that again, whether the gods your forefathers worshiped, uh, beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites and whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Now, the t-shirts, the plaques, uh, maybe the cups or the posters, always have those famous last words. Maybe, maybe they were the most famous words that Joshua ever uttered. And since it's in the 24th chapter of the book, it is close to the end of his life. And so with that in mind, the words that we focus on are always those short words that, that last sentence. And, and by the way, let's be reminded, they're the most important words of uh, the passage. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And so let me ask you the question this evening. What's it going to be? Do you want to be A or do you want to be B? Do you want this or do you want that? You see, the, the whole verse is there. Whether you're going to serve the gods that your forefathers served, and that is the great God Jehovah, the great God Yahweh, or you're living in a land here that you've taken over, and literally all of the heathen uh, tribes that inhabited the land had their own gods. And he singles out the Amorites here, and he says, but will you serve the gods of the Amorites in the land in which you are living? And so, do you want this or that? Do you want God or something or someone else? Um, some of you probably go out to dinner from time to time. I know these aren't as popular as they used to be, but have you ever eaten at a buffet? I am not, not a buffet eater. Uh, I like my food prepared for me, whether it's prepared at home or whether it's a pair prepared at a restaurant. I want to order something from the menu specific. Well, I'm here to tell you today that whether we want to serve God or something or someone else, is it going to be A or B? Is it going to be this or that? Almost says, hey guys, it's a buffet. You can pick a little bit of this and you can pick a little bit of that. Uh, I'll take a little of each, please. But no. Joshua makes it very clear. Are you going to serve who your forefathers served? Or are you going to serve the God of the Amorites? Who are the folks in this land that you are inhabiting right now? It's one or the other. Now that's pretty specific. 
Jesus was very pointed in this. I would almost take it to the point where Jesus was dogmatic in this. In Matthew chapter 7, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said there are two gates. He says there are two roads. He says one of the roads, one of the gates is narrow and the other is wide. He indicates that the narrow road leads to life and the broad road leads to destruction and it leads to death. Again, it's one or the other. It's not a buffet. You can't take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. God doesn't want worldliness in us. He calls us to be godly people. It's our goal in life to have Christ-like attributes in our life. We can't do that if we pick and choose the things that we're going to do. We can't take the narrow way. We can't take the narrow gate and try to take the broad gate and the broad road at the same time. We've got to take one or the other. And so the question is, what's it going to be? Are you going to serve the gods that your forefathers served? Or are you going to serve the gods of this land? And if we bring it down from Joshua's term, time to today, are you going to serve Jesus Christ? Are you going to serve the Father, the true and living God? Or you, are you going to allow worldliness to dominate your life? It would be just like Joshua talking to those people and saying, are you going to worship those pagan gods of the Amorites? The line that has separated the believer and the non-believer has been blurred more than ever in the world that we live in. People think that they can eat at the buffet. They think that they can partake of a little bit of everything and that God will still accept them. Jesus doesn't indicate that. He says there are two ways. You have to choose the correct way. It's almost as if we we live in the, <laughs> I know this is old advertising. I'll show my age a little bit. It's almost as if we live in the in the Burger King generation. I remember they had a, a commercial and they said, you know what? If you want to order a Burger King burger, you can order it and get whatever you want on it. All right. We live in the Burger King generation. I can have it any old way I want. Well, you know, it might work with a hamburger. But it doesn't work with the way we live our lives as Christians. I hate to be the bearer of negative news. Uh, but historically, our way is not a good way. Our way is not the good way. God's way is the good way. And we have to go down the path that God has prescribed for us. Now you've heard this old term and sometimes it's used, ah, you know, it, it, it's almost in a, in a dominant way. Like when one person has dominance over another and it says, he says, you know what? It's my way or the highway. Well, you know what? 
Jesus is saying that to us. It's either the one way, the right way, or the wrong way. Now, if we turn to the sixth chapter of the book of Galatians, we can put our finger on this. The sixth chapter of the book of Galatians, starting with verse 7. Right, if, if you want to follow along. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will reap from the flesh corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. You see, Paul is saying there's just one way. There's just one way to sow. We must sow to the Spirit and not to the flesh. We can't have it our own way. We have to have it God's way. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those that are of the household of faith. That's part of our sowing. And what we reap when we sow correctly is we reap eternal life. But if folks sow to the flesh, they will reap to the flesh. We can't have it our way. We must have it God's way. And here's the truth. Jesus is the way. Plain, simple, unadorned. Jesus is the way. Now, with that in mind, we seriously need to make a choice. Now, don't go wringing your hands. Oh, no, not a choice. I have to make a choice. When we get up in the morning, we make a multiplicity of choices. We choose what we will eat for breakfast. We choose what clothing we will wear. We choose uh, what we will drink. Uh, during the day, if we like music, we will choose what music we want to listen to. If we watch TV, we will choose what shows we want to watch. If, uh, if, uh, we have friends, we'll choose what friends we want to hang out with. If it's on social media, we'll choose who we want to get on social media with. We make choices daily. Now, by our words and by our actions, we choose. And we better choose to serve God. While some by their words and by their actions choose not to serve God, my question that rings through to you this evening is, what about you? And we'll go back to the title. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? So if we go back to Joshua's words, what is Joshua saying to the people? Now understand, these are his people. He's the head honcho and has been for quite some time. And the people look up to him, and they look up to his leadership. As a matter of fact, my sermon last week was about the leadership of Joshua. What he said is this, The time for riding on the fence is over. There's no straddling the fence. You're either on one side of the fence or the other side of the fence. And so, Joshua says, Choose. Let's be very specific. Let's look at the verse. He says, choose this day. 
right? But if serving the Lord seems undesirable you, to you, then choose for yourselves this day who you will serve. The choice is ours. The tennis term is the ball is in your court. If you're a hitter in baseball, the pitcher's about to throw the ball. It's time to make a choice. And before you take another step, Jesus, again in the Sermon on the Mount, lays it out as clearly and succinctly as he can in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where he says, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. That's not a multiplicity of choices. It's not a buffet. You don't get to choose a pick of, a, you know, a, a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of that and hope that it pleases God. God wants us to make one choice. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. What Joshua is saying is what Jesus said. First things first. You know what? Maybe we made a bad choice or two yesterday. Let's not give a repeat performance. We can start right now to make good choices. That's what Joshua says. Choose for yourself this day. Make the choice now. As for me and my household, we're going to serve God. And so the question that was the title of my lesson still stands out for us. What's it going to be? And so we're going to start very much with the basics. If you're listening to this this evening and you haven't made the choice to follow God through Jesus Christ, if you haven't obeyed the plan of salvation laid out for us in the New Testament, follow Joshua's words. Then choose for yourself this day who you will serve. When you make that choice, you choose to serve God. And so if you haven't made that choice, if you haven't confessed Jesus as the Son of God, if you haven't repented and said those choices that I made yesterday were bad, my choices now are going to be better. And if you need to be baptized for the remission of your sins so that you can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, this is the invitation that is open to you this evening. If you need to come to the Lord, get on the phone, uh, get on your computer, uh, get one of us, and we will be there in, in a second to meet your needs. So the question still is there. It was there in Joshua's day. He said to the people, what's it going to be? Are you going to serve the gods that are here? Or are you going to serve the one true and living God. Me, my family, we're going to serve the Lord. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we have so much to learn from the Old Testament and some of the great men of the Old Testament. The words of Joshua here in Joshua chapter 24 are so beautiful and so true, and they are echoed by Jesus, when Jesus says that there is one way to go. It is the way that leads to God. Help us this evening to, if we haven't made that commitment, to make it. And if we have made that commitment, to firm it up, to, to live our life each day and make the choices necessary that will put us in good light with you, that we will be followers of yours in both word 
and in deed. Pray that you will bless us through the evening. Uh, uh, make, uh, make our pillow uh, the word of God and the love of God uh, that is within us because of your blessed son. Continue to be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please all of you be safe and may God bless you. Oh.